right to disconnect. It's a new law that's in effect, but what does it actually mean? For more on that, let's go to Ted Flett, employment lawyer from Zubis Flett Law. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Good evening. For many overworked employees, you can imagine this sounds fantastic. The idea being that if you're not at work, you don't need to respond to work emails, for example. But who does this actually apply to? So, Morella, uh, the law now uh, essentially requires that employers with more than 25, 25 or more employees are required to implement and distribute a written policy that addresses the uh, disconnecting from work matter or issue. It's a little misleading to call it a right because it's more of a principle. Uh, and uh, essentially, work is defined for the purposes of the policy as looking at, reviewing, and responding to communications, as well as performing work. Okay. So if you are an employee and your manager puts this out or your company puts this out and you follow it, for example, you stop responding to emails or phone calls at a certain time, and then get reprimanded, what happens? Well, it, it's sort of going to depend. And this is one of the challenges, Morella, is that the law essentially says that employers have to have a policy in place. But what that policy says and how it applies to, let's say, different types of employees, whether you work on the shop floor or you work in, in the executive suite, is going to vary depending on the industry, the employer, the sector, et cetera. OK, so uh, are there obvious exemptions? Uh, the obvious, no, essentially there are, there are no exemptions. It's just that uh, if, you know, overtime abilities will still exist, uh, employees' claims or potential to claim overtime, if they're eligible for overtime, will still exist. Okay, so it sounds to me like there's no penalty then for a company for not abiding by certain rules that you would, you would expect as far as disconnecting go. Yeah, we're going to have to watch and see what the Ministry of Labor arbitrators and mediators uh, say in response to this, as well as judges in terms of uh, the coming years when there's been breaches of the disconnecting from work policies or enacting or even having the policies rather. Does it have any teeth? Uh, not yet, not much, to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's really more sort of a, a philosophy and trying to unblur the blurred lines between personal lives and professional lives that were created in part from the pandemic uh, with the work from home mandates or the lockdowns uh, that, that really blurred those lines. Okay, so Ted, if you're an employee and, and you're excited about this idea, how would you advise them? What would you say? I would say wait to see the, the policy. If there isn't a policy, ask for one. Uh, and once you have the policy, assess it, read it, take questions to your employer, and hold your employer to the fire in terms of what's in the policy, what it contains, and how it's distinguishing your work life from your personal life. A quick question as far as deadline for the policy to come out. Has that been spelled out? Do we know when companies need to have a policy in place? Uh, as, of la as of June 1st, policies were to be in place. Now. It's important that employers monitor their headcount of employees. If they don't have 25 employees as of right now, then they don't have to have the policy. However, if that headcount increases as of January 1st, 2023, then they're going to have to have a policy uh, by March. Got it. All right, Ted Flett, appreciate you joining us on the program, sir. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Good evening.